leading the revolution of talk radio. back so soon didn't even have a chance to read my mail here okay all right well uh, what is that wise guy back from i guess so okay well we got another hour what the heck are we gonna do with it i can't imagine i can't help it guys i'm just really 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 sick and tired of the heavy stuff um and I'm, I'm, I'm troubled by the, uh, by the election, by the, the, the candidates, by the coverage of it, by I'm, I'm losing interest. I, I'm actually losing interest, if you can imagine. I suppose I'll get it ratcheted up again as the, uh, as the day comes closer. Meanwhile, let me check my uh, bush clock. Oh, God. 160 days. Is that starting to feel uh, doable? Uh, maybe. That's uh, that's five. But the, you know, that's five months. That's five months. But still. But it's sort of like working a ten-hour day. We're down inside of like two hours now. No, I agree. I agree. Uh, it, you know, I, I well, I started watching this thing when it was in the thousands. And we'd come through the, I remember being so excited when we hit, you know, 999. God. Oh. You know, it's like, I feel like we've been serving a, a, almost like a life sentence where you're sitting in a cell and you're marking off each day. It's been rough. And we ain't through it yet. God help us. Well, the best news out today is that study that says that uh, fat people are, I, I, um, you know, they, they, they can be just as healthy as uh, skinny people. And, in fact, skinny people might be not as healthy. So the skinny guy there and a fat guy there, you think just by looking at them, you're going to make assumptions about who's got coronary heart disease and who's got high blood pressure and who's got anything? Ha! According to the study, you don't necessarily know. On the other hand, it's probably best not to carry around a lot of extra weight is wise guy there so he called back after all right all right wise guy go ahead good morning lynn the wise guy is going to give you another position in all right this situation go ahead with, uh, well where the hell were you when i called on you last time <laughs> i was in one of those zones where there wasn't any reception <laughs> oh okay now if every president who proposed and every congressman or senator who voted for legislation who had affairs, we probably might be back in the Stone Age, so to speak. But see, that's not the real issue. Certainly, Mr. Edwards, you understand safe sex, don't you? Oh, you don't. And by the way, madam, you don't know when you're ovulating at age 42? You have to be kidding. Well, we go on the assumption if that baby is Mr. Edwards. Well, Mr. Edwards, if that's yours, if you don't know you were entrapped, well, then you have absolutely no right to ever choose a cabinet, make appointments, because you're not so swift. You're not too bright, Mr. Edwards. There's the real rub. And the other rub, so to speak, if both of them were unaware, and neither of them want to practice this business the correct way, maybe that's an argument for sex education in southern schools and schools in general. After all, Mr. Edwards, you should know how to do this if you're going to do it. And, madam, you've been only ovulating for 30 years. Don't you know either? Edwards, you idiot, you've been entrapped if that's your child. Mm -hmm. Another position to look at. No, I agree, but it, but it does. It, it comes. Yeah, okay, fine, and I appreciate it. It comes down to judgment, though. Yeah, if he could get had this easily, you don't want him uh, going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vladimir Putin. Uh, I mean, yeah, if he could be had that easily, what's to prevent him from putting a condom on? Exactly right. Maybe he's thinking she's 42, she ain't going to get pregnant. Maybe she's telling him whatever. Whatever. Total bad judgment all the way down the line. And I had thought that when he said on Friday, uh, I'd be glad to take a paternity test. I know it's not my child because the timing just doesn't work. I was willing to believe him because I couldn't imagine why he would say, I'll take a paternity test if he knew he wasn't going to pass it. 
but I, how naive of me. I wasn't thinking that the fix was already in in that regard. She's been paid off to say no one's doing a paternity test on my baby. So he could say that and, uh, and know darn well that he was never going to have to. Oh, I don't know. Okay, I'm sick of it now. I am. I'm sick of it. Uh, just to sober up quite a bit. I had, um, as you know, been reading the names of our dead in Iraq since the war began. And um, I've been troubled by the fact that th those of our soldiers who die in Afghanistan were not being noted in the paper where I've been getting the names. And that's the New York Times. They print a little box, they separate it with a box, and they precede the names uh, with uh, the, the following. The Department of Defense has identified American service members who have died since the start of the war, confirmed the deaths of the following Americans, um, you know, last Monday or whatever the day is. And I've been reading them because they were made available to me like that, but it began to rankle me that I couldn't understand why they weren't honoring to me it was an honor to put the names of the dead and why they would not be honoring those who died in Afghanistan and I wrote a letter an email to the New York Times asking for an explanation received no answer and shortly after though they did on a front page note that the 500th American had been killed in Afghanistan that was a week ago and uh, I think maybe they thought they made up for it by publishing not only the names of those 500, but also their pictures. And it took up over three pages of the Times that day. And because I had not read their names, I said I intend to read all these names of those killed in Afghanistan. I started last week, and I was waiting for some time to continue. And I'm going to do that now. Theodore Clark Jr., 31 years old, Emporia, Virginia. Herbert Clouch, 58, Wetumpka, Alabama. Brian Clemens, 19. Kokomo, Indiana. Sean Clemens, 28, Allegheny, New York. Jesse Clowers, Jr., 27, Herndon, Virginia. Walter Cohey, the third, 26, Wicomico, Maryland. Jeremiah Cole, 26, Hiawatha, Kansas. Casey Combs, 28, Auburn, Washington. Matthew Commons, 21, Boulder City, Nevada. David Connolly, 37, Boston, Mass. Ryan Connolly, 24, Vacaville, California. Robert Cook, 24, Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. William Cooper, 22, Yapora, Mississippi. Sean Corlew, 37, Thousand Oaks, California. Bernard Corpus, 28, Watsonville, California. Brian Craig, 27, Houston, Texas. Heath Craig, 28, Severn, Maryland. Richard Crane, 25, Independence, Missouri. Leighton Crass, 22, Richmond, Indiana. Bradley Cross, 27, Orange Park, Florida. Joseph Cruz, 22, Whittier, California. Jason Cunningham, 26, Camarillo, California. Joseph Carruri, 27, Los Angeles, California. Michael Curry, Jr., 37, Denia Beach, Florida. 
Patrick Damon, 41, Falmouth, Maine. Adam Davis, 19, Twin Falls, Idaho. Bryant Davis, 20, Chicago, Illinois. Jefferson Davis, 39, Watoga, Tennessee. Justin Davis, 19, Gaithersburg, Maryland. Robert Davis, 23, Jackson, Missouri. Edwin Dezachikum, Belleville, Illinois. Hire... R. D. Jesus Garcia, 29, Chatsworth, California. Robert DeFazio, 21, West Babylon, New York. Bernard Degand, 42, Mayetta, Kansas. Jared Dennis, 19, Soper, Oklahoma. Jeremy DePotter, DePotty, 26, Ironwood, Michigan. Jeffrey DePrimo, 35, Pittston, PA. Nick Dewhurst, Onalaska, Wisconsin. Era Dacey, 18, Parker, Arizona. Isaac Diaz, 26, Rio Hondo, Texas. Danny Dietz, Jr., 25, Littleton, Colorado. James Dillon, Jr., 19, Grove City, PA. Jason Disney, 21, Fallon, Nevada. Dwayne Dively, 43, Rancho, California. John Doles, 29, Claremore, Oklahoma. Christopher Donaldson, 28, Effingham, Illinois. James Doherty, 37, Aurora, Colorado. David Dracolich, 22, Reno, Nevada. Robert Drawl, Jr., 21, Alexandra, Virginia. Brandon Dronit, 33, Erath, Louisiana. Scott Duffman, 32, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Russell Durgan, 23, Henniker, New Hampshire. Sierra Durkin, 30, Quincy, Mass. Scott Dyer, 38, Cocoa Beach, Florida. James Ebers, 19, Orland Hills, Illinois. Kevin Egden, 31, Dyersburg, Tennessee. John Edmonds, 20, Cheyenne, Wyoming. Daniel Eggers, 28, Cape Coral, Florida. Jody Egnor, 32, Middletown, Ohio. Nicholas Eichen, 24, Sanger, California. Gregory Elam, 39, Columbus, Georgia. Emigio Elizararis, 37, Pico Rivera, California. Zachary Ensley, 21, Spring, Texas. Michael Esposito, Jr., 22, Brentwood, New York. Forrest Ewens, 25, Gig Harbor, Washington. Troy Esnerek, 39, Lancaster, PA. Christopher Falkel, 22, Highlands Ranch, Colorado. Daniel Farkas, 42, Brooklyn, New York. Curtis Feisner, 34, White Bear Lake, Minnesota. Gregory Farron, 28, Barragada, Guam. Kelvin Feliciano Gutierrez, 21, Anasco, Puerto Rico. Joseph Fenty, 40, Run, Ronkin Como, New York. Christopher Fernandez, 28, Dedito, Guam. Kyle Caio Fernandez, 26, Waipahu, Waipahu Hawaii. Matthew Ferrara, 24, Torrance, California. James Finley, 21, Lebanon, Missouri. Michael Fiscus, 36, Milford, Indiana. William Flanagan, 37, Indiana, Indianapolis, Indiana. Jacob Fleischer, 25, St. Louis, Missouri. John Flynn, 36, Sparks, Nevada. Jacques Fontaine, 36, New Orleans. 
Ryan Faraker, 31, Logan, Ohio. <clears throat> Excuse me. James Fordyce, 22, Newton Square, PA. Jeremy Foshi, 25, Pisca, Alabama. Dale Fracker, Jr., 23, Apple Valley, California. David Fraze, 24, New Orleans. John Fralish, 30, New Kingstown, PA. Gregory Frampton, 37, Santa Clara, California. Benny Franklin, 19, Hammond, Louisiana. Jacob Frazier, 24, St. Charles, Illinois. Daniel Freeman, 20, Cincinnati, Ohio. Carrie Frith, 37, Las Vegas, Nevada. William Fritchie, 23, Martinsville, Indiana. Joseph First, the third, 26, Tampa, Florida. Michael Fuga, 47, Newly, American Samoa. Chad Fuller, 24, Potsdam, New York. We're back, and uh, again, reminder: the phone number is four one two three 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 thirteen sixty. Well, it's a uh, it's eleven twenty twenty five p.m. in uh, Singapore, but Bree's still up. Hello, Bree. Hi, Len. Hi. <clears throat> Hi. It's good to talk to you again. Thank you. Um, a couple of things. First, uh, I don't know if you've been following the uh, the Olympics. The um, the new thing that they're saying is that the girl was uh, lip syncing to. Uh, the little girl was lip syncing to the song that she was singing, and it was sung as uh, together with another uh, younger girl who did not have the appearance that they wanted. But I, I just think it's funny that it's uh, there's so many things that uh, you know they're <laughs> really getting critical on the the opening. Oh, that's which, absurd. I, don't know, I, I thought the like op- the opening was about as uh, astonishing a display of. Uh, of ingenuity, creativity. I generally don't like those big, huge, uh, you know, like, yeah, I think of like a Super Bowl halftimes are like something to be run screaming from. But Uh, that Chinese display was Uh, out of this world. I would argue the reason they're being so critical is, is it is the Chinese, and they're looking for a reason to complain about China. Well, that's absurd. Yeah. And I, I, the fact that that little girl was lip sync she sure lip synced well, <laughs> lip synced well. And who cares? What difference does and that before make? that, it was the, yeah. what? all the fireworks weren't real on camera. Oh, big, so what? <laughs> I mean, hello, yeah. so what? Uh, I, well, I Lynn, also the, the medal count, it depends on the media you're looking at. It's funny because um, in, in the Shanghai Daily, if you go to their website, they have China leading in the medal count. But if you go to ESPN, it has the U.S., then China. And if you go to Britain's Telegraph, it has China, then the U.S. It depends on if you go by overall medal count or the total number of golds that they've won. But I don't know how they're calculating this, but it's interesting to see different media sites having different rankings yeah. of, you know, sort of who's on top. Well, that seems like it'd be pretty obvious what it would be, but uh, but I, the way they're, it's playing out in uh, the papers here is they give the counts... Uh, for gold, silver, and bronze. And uh, so the way I've been seeing it today, today's paper, it shows China ahead in gold medals, but the United States ahead in overall because we got a ton of bronze. Okay. Yeah, if they, if they break it down. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, do you think that, I mean, I don't know at what point, uh, the getting back to the Edwards thing, uh, when that was occurring, but did was it occurring before Iowa? Because the, the reason I ask that is, if you recall, Clinton came in third in Iowa, and mm-hmm. it was only like a 0.2% difference. Mm-hmm. And a lot of, there's a lot of speculation that, you know, I guess, it, you know, it's, a, it's, a, it's definitely a what-if game, but it's a fun one to play. Would that have given Clinton the lead in Iowa and then uh, allowed her to continue? Because I think Iowa really was what propelled Obama. If you remember his speech after winning Iowa, he sounded very presidential. It was almost like he had won the whole shebang. And in fact, I had uh, folks here in uh, in Asia who were asking me, "Wow, Obama really won. He's going to be the president, right?" 
you know, I say, no, no, that was just, that's just one state, and it's a long process. Yeah, but you recall and he went he on, had, the next date was New Hampshire, and he got, he got beat. Barely, yeah. Yeah, well, you know, uh, he got I beat. Think, but I, you know, this, this speculation, this comes from... Uh, uh, Hillary Clinton's people, well, geez, if uh, if there hadn't been this cover-up by Edwards, we would have won. You know, uh, Matt was uh, going nuts about this yesterday. I mean, as you say, it's, I mean, I don't think it's fine. You can have these kinds of discussions about if, uh, you know, what? Matt, did you have some for your blog? I mean, Matt was actually writing in his blog about this. If what? I, I okay. actually call these a penis moment. It's one of those things where if my aunt had a penis, she'd be my uncle. But the fact of the matter is she doesn't. So she's still my aunt. I mean, sure, what if this happened? What if that happened? But the fact of the matter is they lost. Harold uh, Wolfson is the guy that's been that's pitching right. this. Her communica- Howard, Howard Wolfson. Howard Wolfson, yeah. her communications guy. And the fact of the matter is he had a front-running candidate when this thing started and managed to lose with her. He needs to look in the mirror first and foremost when he finds out why he's not the nominee, his candidate isn't the nominee right now. And, and Lynn, finally, did you see anything about the report of uh, Saudi Arabia getting the green light for nuclear power? Yeah, that's, uh, that's okay. actually old news here, uh, and that okay. we are, we are uh, helping them uh, to uh, do that. And, and we've been talking about what insanity that is. Uh, here is a country that has no, obviously no shortage of oil, but if it were looking for a secondary source, uh, since it is, uh, I think, pretty much 100% desert, uh, the, the obvious secondary source is uh, solar. Solar. And uh, yeah. that we, the United States, is giving them all the kinds of, uh, of materials and stuff that uh, we're jumping all over Iran for for having access to. Yeah. It, it is mind-boggling, mind-boggling that we would be putting in place uh, the uh, the opportunity for another Mid Eastern country to uh, potentially be able to enrich uranium and uh, build a little bomb. So uh, insanity. Is afoot. Well, as usual. absolutely, and you know, let's not forget that we still have. Uh, I, I think it was. Uh, I don't know who said it, but we still have a lot of nuclear weapons that are still aimed. Oh, heck. at. at I, I think it was a guest on your show. Yeah, um, right. I, it was. I mean, we have. Uh, that's absolutely right. It was. Uh, it was Paul Ehrlich saying. I mean, my gosh, we've got. We could destroy, right, the Russia 500,000 times over, and they could destroy us as well. They still have that weaponry. And I don't understand and, why well, we're not addressing that well, issue. Listen, I mean, well, we're too busy, uh, you know, doing other stuff. Uh, <laughs> well, Bree, hey, go to bed, for right. God's sakes. It's, it's late. Yes, yes, okay. I do need to go to bed. <laughs> <All> right, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Lynn. Nice hearing from Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. That's uh, our Singapore correspondent i got to get my med break in here guys i'll be right back 412-333-1360 that's the phone number use it liberally i'm lynn cullen it's am news talk 1360 just adds up that on thursday we're going to have uh, uh author david marinus on right uh we've had him before last time he was on we were talking about his book about roberto clemente uh, he's also noted for books about uh, Vince Lombardi and others, and he's turned his attention now to the uh, to the Olympics. And uh, but the the 1960 Olympics, a real blast from the past. But uh, he finds the 60 Olympics uh, emblematic of uh, the extraordinary changes that were about to occur in uh, in our lives. And uh, the 60 Olympics was the Olympics when we first uh, met a young, he looked scrawny to me at the time, but I guess he must not have been, a young boxer from Louisville named Cassius Clay. We don't have that book yet, though. How am I supposed to do this without a book? It's supposed to come in today. Yeah, right. So I'll have what, one day to read it? Well, two, technically. He's on no, Thursday. because I'll, I'm not going to get it today. I'm going to get it tomorrow on Wednesday, and he's on Thursday. I'm hoping the mailman hurries up. Yeah, right. Well, I might be a speed reader, but I ain't that good. Hey, Martha, Upper St. Clair, go ahead. How are you? I am okay. Thank you very much. I've 
Bob Hoover has a column in the paper today. It's really funny. He's talking about titles. Mm -hmm. And I thought you would like the title of this book. What is it? It's called Makers and Takers. And the subtitle is <clears throat> Why Conservatives Work Harder, Feel Happier, Have Closer Families, Take Fewer Drugs, Give More Generously, Value Honesty More, Are Less Materialistic and Envious, Whine Less, and Hug Their Children More than Liberals. you got to be kidding. And, and then... That, that's the title. Was of that the, the whole book, book or was that the... That, that's the title. That's the title. Well, well, that, you know, you would think these conservatives would give, get sick and tired of, uh, of... Who reads that crap? Who believes that crap? Well, who reads it, believes it, bothers writing it? Who, who's the publisher? It must be Regnery again. Oh, God. Uh, it's published by... Actually, it's published by Doubleday. My, but my. It, it, it reminds me, a thousand years ago, reading, I read a column by Art Bookwall. Mm -hmm. And the term in those days wasn't liberal. It was secular human. Oh, yes, the secular humanists. <laughs> and he had this ab absolutely hysterical call, and he said, how do you know if it's a secular humanist? He might be sitting right beside you and you <laughs> never recognize him. Oh, my God. Yes. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, life is scary. <laughs> it is really scary. I know, and I just... Uh, isn't that something? These just amuse me so much. I remember writing a, a, a column in the paper because one of our local, <clears throat> uh, I won't mention her name, but she was talking about talking to a cab driver, and she said, who, who uh, tips better? And, and he said, oh, definitely liberals, I mean conservatives all the time. They're the best tippers. And I thought, yeah, he's taking a, he's got a, some sort of monitor on his head. He knows this person is liberal. How do they know if he's a liberal or a conservative? Yeah, he's got something tattooed on his head or something. Oh, for God's sake, I'll tell you. But I thought you'd enjoy the. Thank you very well, much. You're welcome. Yeah, I sort of enjoyed it, and I sort of didn't because, on the other other hand, it just, uh, oh, the inanity, the stupidity, the materialistic. I already said inanity, didn't I? I can't use that again. Whatever. It's depressing. I've been, I've been in a mood since the show began, and uh, thank God we managed to get into flying dog turds and stuff like that in the second hour, which elevated my mood considerably. And now uh, in this third hour, I'm really back in the dumps again. But that's what happens when I, I'm sitting here staring at these faces of our dead in Afghanistan, and it's endless. It's endless. It's endless. And it's it's one tenth of our dead in Iraq. Oh gosh, Rich North Hills, hello. Hi, how you doing today? I'm doing okay. Good. Hey, uh, about the the fellows who or the, the GIs have died over there, and you read the list. Mm -hmm. Do you know for uh, if the Pentagon publishes the yes the report? Yeah, they do. But I mean, the guys who come back wounded. They die oh no 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 there. no that I don't I do not know I do not know if uh, they include people who are uh, managed to get uh, back to the country and then later succumb to their wounds that I do not know. Because mm -hmm. I just wonder if they're loath and the president's loath to have their names read or to, to I don't know the coffins. I well, I mean, obviously that number is so much. I mean, the number of grievously wounded. Uh, is huge, mm -hmm. and uh, and that in part, I mean, I know it's been noted many times that uh, the the way we are able to quickly sort of uh, uh, do triage and trauma uh, and and what is the word? I can't even think of it. Uh, there are many many of those who who survive uh, attacks in right. Afghanistan and w would have been absolutely dead uh, in any other war we've we've ever fought and so the death toll is uh, sort of strangely low uh, if we were to have a list of all those whose lives have been destroyed and or ended by their service uh, the list would be huge oh, 
Exactly. Okay, well, I just wanted to know if there was any... All right, no, I I have no idea. I'm Uh, sorry, I don't know, Rich. Okay, thanks, Thank you, you're welcome. Bye. Bye. And, uh, you know, in in some respects, um, with some of these um, IEDs and with uh, some of the injuries... Uh, that people have somehow managed to live. Uh, I, I say live like that because uh, they may be in a coma. They may have, you know, half their brains blown away. They may be blind, deaf, essentially vegetables. Um, and if you... If you were talking about somebody that I loved, I would prefer that they have been killed outright than that they would be condemned to live the rest of uh, their whatever is left to them of their lives in in the state and condition that so many of our soldiers are in. But... You know, in terms of the numbers, to me the number is one. Each each individual soldier, each name I read, each face is a it's a human life. It's a it's a and you look at their faces. It it kills me as I read them because I I'm looking at these faces of these wonderful human beings. And it's not just them. It's everyone who loves them. So the pain, the, the trauma is, uh, well, it touches so many more than just the person who's gone. And uh, I, don't, I don't understand why we, we, we honor them in this abstract kind of a way, but it doesn't seem like we honor them with a kind of thoughtfulness and a a desire to know them, you know, which I think would make a lot more sense and would be the the proper way to go about it when people have literally sacrificed their lives. Here we are. We're all alive. I'm alive. I mean, I got a whole afternoon in front of me where I'm going to probably complain about some stuff and do my errands and live my old mundane life. And I'm looking at all these faces of people who never will have the mundane life that I had. I'm enjoying today. Or even the difficult day I'm having. I'm sure they'd all take it in a minute. Boy. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm. I'm it just really oh, gets me down. Four one two three 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 thirteen sixty. I, when we come back, let me do something a little. I'm gonna uh, pull us out of this funk. Um, uh, Matt gave me uh, uh, one of these Mark Morford columns in, from the San Francisco uh, Chronicle. This guy's stark raving nuts, but. Um, some of this is funny. Maybe we can. He's come up with uh, nine new drugs uh, that he believes. Uh, well, I guess what this came about because he he read that report which, <laughs> that somebody had developed a pill that if you I mean it's, they haven't given it to human beings yet, but if you give it to mice who are essentially couch potatoes. I guess mice come in all kinds, kind of mice who just don't want to move or just sit around doing nothing all day. Uh, They found a pill that you can give the mouse, and the mouse then displays uh, a 44% increase in their uh, endurance and all kinds of things. So this holds out the possibility that uh, couch potatoes are going to uh, be able to pop a pill. And stay right there on the couch and still be in shape. So in his uh, fertile imagination, Mark Morford has come up with some other pills uh, that we might want to look forward to. I can share some of that with you and might 
give you a chuckle or two, which would certainly be preferable to um, the misery I've been peddling for the last uh, half hour. Okay? Good. I'm Lynn Cullen. It's AM News Talk 1360. I should also, I I should tell you that I'm actually going to be a guest on another talk show um, Thursday night. And uh, I'm going to be on with uh, Bev Smith, who, of course, is a nationally syndicated uh, talk show host uh, out of Pittsburgh. Uh, And uh, she is carried uh, here by uh, Whammo. And I'll be... uh, I'll be on there, I guess, at 7, Thursday night. Okay? For a little while, Bev and I are... I was just reading the press release they sent out, and uh, it's all news to me, but it says uh, the two are expected to discuss the presidential race, gender in America, their respective experiences in the male-dominated world of talk radio, and the past-to-present issues of race and heritage... (laughs) <laughs> as they are used in news, talk radio, and other arenas. Good Lord. Sounds like I better get a good night's sleep. Uh, she's, a, she's something. So, Actually, the reason I got into talk radio was Bev Smith. Bev Smith was uh, on uh, then WTAE radio, and uh, she got a, a better job in, I believe, Washington, D.C., and uh, off she went to Washington, D.C., and I, at the time, was sitting uh, one floor up in the WTAE-TV newsroom, and uh, I was asked if I wanted to take a whack at uh, radio, and I think my answer was no, <laughs> frankly. No, I don't think so. I said, I never listened to it, and I don't know how to do it, and I don't mm, know. But uh, I think somebody forced me down the steps, and in I went. And and I took to it like a duck to water. I mean, I just loved it. But if Bev hadn't uh, left, I never would be here right now. So, uh, for whatever. Anyway, I promised you to read a little bit of this Marford column, because I, I just glanced at it and looked like he might have something sort of funny here about all the ridiculous pills that uh, they now have for just about anything. Uh, Here we go. He's imagining this stuff. Scientists at the Ronald Reagan School for Psychoeconomic Paroxysms have reportedly developed a new drug that, after just a few weeks, induces random bouts of forgetfulness combined with the ability to reverse ideological direction in an instant, most notably when large amounts of cash are placed directly in front of the face. Codename the McCain, users report random outbreaks of very bad jokes, coupled with an extremely combative nature, acute desire to detonate large explosive devices across multiple desert nations, and a general feeling that the real problem with the world today is all the gull dang gay young peacenik whippersnapper environmentalists who like to rub their iPods all over their Googles. Uh, the common prescription for this drug is take two McCain's, and call me in 1957. Shall I quit now, or do you want to hear any more? <laughs> Is this funny? Matt, you're not laughing. You don't think this one's funny? Meh. Meh. Ah. Oh, the, uh, the Dow's dropping? The Dow's dropping? Well, I I shouldn't just know it's when it's dropping, because the fact is it was uh, going up a little bit there in the last few years. I mean, days. Uh, anyway. Well, let's see. Shall, uh, shall I try one more of these? Maybe not. Let's see. One of the most successful drugs of the past 15 years, scientists successfully synthesized a rare compo- compound that induces a feeling that, despite the fact, 
that you just ingested four giant triple shot vente mochas. Your body only enjoys the sensory neural equivalent of a tepid glass of watery Folgers crystals. The Starbucks, that's the name of the drug, has nevertheless proven to be hugely addictive despite almost complete lack of flavor, effect, or pleasure. Side effects include obsessive journaling, near constant wearing of navy blue fleece jackets from REI, inexplicable appreciation for the Dave Matthews Band and or John Mayer, and launching of personal blogs dedicated to twin loves of cats and long blank stares into vast eternal nothingness just past the tip of your nose. Well, I don't know that this is funny. Okay, I'll try one more and then I'm giving up. The Fox News pill. Uh, it is a uh, let's see. Uh, regular use reportedly causes knee to jerk in reaction to even the slightest complex issue. It is safe for brain damaged dogs, however. It is a bowel irritant, induces silent screaming, intestinal numbness, odd tingling in root of perineum as if genitalia is being eaten by angry, psoriatic rats. Nevertheless, the Fox News pill, still eagerly consumed by large segments of the population, mostly due to garish red, white, and blue packaging and bogus guarantees of protection against scary gay people. All right. One more. The E American Pie pill. Uh, it, it can cause possible blindness, known to induce righteous paralysis in nearly half of all users. Excess use sufficiently shuts down cognitive processes in prefrontal lobes and redirects functions of reason and judgment to the same area that spawns guttural fears, religious indignation, and love of domestic light beers. While generally considered safe and even pleasurable in small doses, Large amounts of the E American Pie pill can wipe out any desire to. Oh, it's not E American, it's the American Pie pill. <laughs> there was a typo. Okay. While generally considered safe and even pleasurable in small doses, large amounts can wipe out any desire to travel, read books, learn a foreign language, have sex for pleasure, or speak in complete sentences. The pill is shaped like an actual piece of apple pie. All the better to lure children. Active ingredients secretly added to water supply in many, many Midwestern states, actually, since 1952. All right. One more. Following research at Harvard and McGill universities where scientists have been testing new drugs that delete bad memories. Researchers in Washington, D.C. have found a new compound that tricks the brain into believing great progressive accomplishments are being made and tremendous strides have been taken to reverse all sorts of previous damage when, in fact, very little has been done and mostly what's happening is a lot of general whimpering wrapped in a great many false gestures, all while promising even more super positive changes ahead, but if only someone really good steps in as leader and tells everyone what to do. Introduced to great excitement and fanfare when it first hit the market in November of 2006, the Congressional Democrat, that's the name of the pill, has only proven moderately effective as a stimulant and is currently considered a big, fat disappointment. There you have it. Oh, no, it's Carl Anna reporting in. Carl Anna, as you know, the most conscientious citizen that uh, we know, who uh, attends at least three or four protests a week, writes her congressperson and or in touch with other elected officials daily, and uh, even though I'm constantly sort of making fun of her, I'm in awe, and if we all were like her, uh, we wouldn't have the government we've got. We'd have a better one. All right, Carlana, what you been up to? Well, uh, first I have to say that I'm not really at the top of the list. There are some dynamite people here in town that are way ahead of me, but uh, the, the, our motto should be don't get angry or depressed get even that's what i'm doing that's well yeah, I, I had a, even. you know my favorite button that in i had in the 60s when i was somewhat active uh was said don't agonize organize right that's right right and saturday was a great moment it was 
it was uh, it goes down you know you have certain great moments that occur in your life and that was one of them saint john conyers came to pittsburgh and he was at the convention center and he spoke and it was a great moment the guy is is a saint and he's he could be on Comedy Central. Now, he's wait so funny. A minute. The man is a, it, he's got so much wit. He could be on Comedy Central. And he's the, one of the few congressmen who are actually fighting the Bush administration. You know, he had a hearings a couple of weeks ago on why Bush should be impeached. He had the fellow, uh, what's his name, that uh, did the book about um, persecution of uh, yeah, George Bush Bugliosi. for murder. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, uh, there are. When people get active, like, you know, get join the Thomas Merton Center, I'm telling you, you get to associate with some dynamite people, and I actually got to shake the man's hand as he was leaving and oh say, my thank God, you. Oh, my God, you sound like a teeny bopper. I just was. Got, it was oh, like, geez. I shook his hand and said, thank you. And, and he was, he's right. such a darling, he's a, and he's so funny. All right, all right. The all guy right. is a riot. All anyway, right. I'm just saying, all right. it can be fun uh, to join the Thomas Merton Center oh, and get involved in all this stuff. All right. Do you're, it. You're out of here, Carlana. Okay. Bye. Bye. Oh, God. I think some of those people need to go into a 12-step program. I, that's just what I think. I can't help it. But on the other hand, I understand that they're doing what we're all supposed to do. So there you have it. All right. I'm done, aren't I? Uh, so I was done about three hours ago. Uh, okay. I think I'm coming in tomorrow. We'll try this again. And... Um, Meanwhile, enjoy this uh, again, this autumnal August day. <laughs> Stay tuned for a little bit of news and Tom Hartman. I'm Lynn Cullen. It's AM News Talk 1360.